But the newspaper said that the workshop was locked from the inside. Two doors, both locked. Ah, yes, sir. The elevator door and the door to the stairs. Well, if that's true, and Max Dyson was murdered, how did the murderer get out? That is very puzzling, Mr. Blake. Very puzzling indeed. And I was hoping you could help us with that. Me? <laughs> how could I? Vibration, sir. Maybe what the murderer was feeling or thinking. Well, so far, Lieutenant, I seem to be picking up all the wrong vibrations. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't seem to have been very much help. Well, don't you worry about it, Mr. Blake. Now that we come this far, we're certainly going to find the murderer. And when we do, maybe you can help us by reading his mind. Greetings, Columbo fans, and welcome to a brand new season of the Columbo Confab Podcast. That is Steve. And April Fool's, Sean. Say hello to the Boogeyman. I don't know what that is. I was kind of hoping... You don't know what that's from. It's from the dang episode we're recording about. Uh, say hello to the Boogeyman? April Fool's, say hello to the Boogeyman? Yeah. Okay. That's what Matt. That's what Mac, Max the Magnificent says to. Oh, him. that's for, right. When he's introduced, oh. Max the oh. Magnificent. Yes. Yeah, so, ladies and gentlemen, um, thanks to Sean blundering that <laughs> fun intro. I thought <laughs> that planned. We were watching Columbo goes to the guillotine. Yeah, which is technically pronounced guillotine, but uh, oh, f- oh my god. <laughs> But everybody in this story calls, pronounces it guillotine because it's not French. They're not French. So, um, oui. yeah. Uh, oui, oui, madame. No, no, thank you. I'll just, I just need to powder my nose. That's a, that's a line. What? That's a, that's a line from Clue, from Clue. Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, this is, of course, we're, we're returning from uh, another break. This is the opening of... Season 11 of our podcast, so wow. thank you for continuing to listen. We are going to have at least 22 more episodes, so we have well, many seasons ahead of us. So I hope our season 11 is much more popular than the Doctor Who season 11. <laughs> now, now, don't go dragging that into this. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's interesting, I do have a note about something from Doctor Who uh, about this um, Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'll tell you what it is right now. I w- oh, I already, well, no. I already, like, let me guess. It's it has something to do with a British actor. Yes. Wow. It's it's that I'm psychic. I wish psych- this was made today, mm-hmm. and that they had Peter Capaldi playing the killer. He would have been really good in this mm. as as the killer. Maybe not just because of the uh, you know English Scottish. Anyway, okay, never mind. Um, all right, so tell us, uh, uh, Steve, tell us all about Columbo Goes to the Guillotine, the opening of the 1990s. Uh, really? Yeah, this is the first one from the 90s. This was interesting. Colum- okay. Columbo's return. So uh, we're introduced uh, to a lady in a, what do they call it? A, a thi- uh, no, it's a chamber, a... Oh, I think what do they call it a isolation booth. That's it. Yeah. Thank you, isolation booth. So, Doctor uh, Paula Hall. So she's in there and they're running tests on. Uh, so she's in there and she's got to uh, pull these cards. It looks very similar to the cards that were used in Ghostbusters <laughs> when Bill Murray's electrocuting uh, that kid with the gum. Um, you know the wavy lines, the star, the circle, uh, and so they're testing uh, the psychic uh, or. Is this is it, would it be called psychic or a, yeah. a mentalist? A psychic, I, I, I think psychic would work. Uh, okay, I, mentalist uh, so is a te- show. I... Yeah, uh, so they're testing to see if he can read minds. We found out later it's it's a government sponsored test because they want 
they want to find somebody that can read the minds of their spies or of of double agents and of the Russians. And so that's that's the process they're going through. And of course, we find out it's all smoke and mirrors. <clears throat> That's uh, the next episode. Uh, but the, the, all smoke and mirrors. Yeah, that's uh, because murder it's actually, smoke and shadows, by the way. Yeah, oh, sorry. Thank you for correcting me. Um, but uh, we found out later that Elliot and Paula are actually lovers. And they've been planning the um, uh, how to fool the government. So they, I guess they could get this um, this grant or something to help fund more, more research or something. Yeah. Uh, which uh, is not a good idea and could lead to a really good motive for murder. Uh, but that's that's not what yep. the motive for murder, it turns out, later on is. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so the government decides, well, in, in order to, uh, before we hire you, Mr. Blake Elliot, no, Mr. Mr. Blake, um, by, by the way, that's the second murderer named Elliot that we've done a story about for a while. Hmm. Uh so really? so yeah, uh, Elliot Markham, uh, the architect and blueprint for murder. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, yeah. so they're gonna have uh, the some guy come in and give him a final test, and right. that's Mister Max Dyson, um, not of uh, Dyson vacuum cleaner fame, but he's actually mm. a uh, magician, and he debunks people. Like Elliot Blake, and I do believe that that yeah. character—I I, don't, maybe not—but he reminded me very much of. Have you ever got heard of a guy named James Randy? Yeah, Amazing Randy. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. That I think that's what he was. It, it, that's what he reminded me of. I don't know if he was a direct inspiration. Oh, I think. Oh, no, no. I was. Uh, so before we started recording here, I was watching videos on Amazing Randy and his million-dollar challenge. Are you serious? Really? Yeah. Yeah, and the way he talks, uh, his mannerisms, I think the guy, I don't know the actor who played Max, uh, uh, but it, very similar. Uh, uh, just the way he holds himself, huh. it's very similar. I think it's intentional, and I think that Elliot is supposed to be Yuri Geller um, in this. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Because, yeah, because yeah, Randy uh, actually like outed Geller on the Johnny Carson show. Right, right. That there's a really good a documentary about him called "An Honest Liar," um, and I don't know if it's still on Netflix or not, but it's 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 fantastic. Like it was one of those things where I don't really want to watch this. Oh, I'll watch it. What the hell? And then I just kind of like was like just pulled into it. It was such a great documentary. So uh, yeah, yeah. So turns out that uh, did was there a moment? Okay, so so. Elliot and um, Elliot Blake and and, and uh, Dyson meet out on the pier or something, and, and you know, in the dark, and they embrace. Uh, did you think for a moment that they were like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like maybe in yes, and I think they were. I, I think it was implied that in in prison, you know, he he even said, "I I, I taught you everything I knew," and and then uh, Elliot says, "And more." <laughs> you remember that that line? That was, I did not. Yeah, I. I I think there was very much there was a relationship uh, at some point. Yeah, well, that's interesting. I think that, mm-hmm. that that's possible. It's, so it's like a men in prison type relationship, like so huh. maybe. Huh. And well, uh, well, supposedly um, not that matters, and I don't think it was known at the time. But um, the amazing Randy's homosexual as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I don't like. I don't, I, don't, I I don't know if that came out back then in the 90s but yeah uh so uh they decide that uh, they're gonna test uh, blake do you want to describe the test should we go through the test oh i uh, forget, so, forgot to oh, mention uh-huh. um they were in a prison in uganda together yes yeah. right right where we later learn it's because and 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 um dyson got out three years before blake did and right. It would involved. We later found out they cheated at some cards or something, and I guess that will send you to prison in Uganda. So anyway, go tell us about the the, the wonderful test. So the what uh, what it involved was uh, Elliot was put in another uh, uh, isolation chamber booth, whatever. And the um, amazing Randy, I mean Max. <laughs> what was his stage name again? Was it? 
Uh, I think it's the Magnif- Magnificent Max. Ma- 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 yeah, that's what it was. So the Magnificent Max uh, sends out three, um, three uh, not army, but military officers or something like that out into L.A. somewhere. Uh, they have to put on a blindfold, select a spot on the map, with a marker, and then take mm-hmm. with a marker, but, but with the with, not the blindfold, but the sh- the eye shield, I think they called it. So they couldn't see where, where they placed the marker uh, to the pick a spot, and then they would go to that exact spot and take a photo. Then I guess they would think about the photo, and then Elliot would then draw the draw the picture. Yes. That's all right. Yeah, that's about it. And they'd hit, so they had three different pictures, three different buildings. Um, mm-hmm. I knew what was going to happen, but he also asks somebody. What Dyson does is he asks somebody in the audience, like pick a uh, direction east. West, yeah. Now, how side. did he know that? Yeah. yeah. And well, that he he knew that there were for each location there were four different places. But the th- yeah, for each location there were four. This is this is the thing. This is the thing. So there were three cars, and they were called Al- Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. Charlie. Okay. Uh-huh. How does um? Now we, they reveal how it's done at the end. But how does Blake know which which book where Alpha's going, where Bravo's going, and where Charlie's going? He knows the three locations, and he's got it memorized that there's four four directions in each location so he's got 12 different images memorized but how does he know which car was going to which location you see the only thing i was really concerned about was that at some point someone was going to have to explain to colombo the portable fax machines (laughs) (laughs) i completely forgot those things existed (laughs) <laughs> when I saw them. Yeah, and then, boy, did they take shitty pictures or what? Yeah. Oh, not the pictures, but the, the, the images when the, when they came out on the other side. Man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So he passes the test, and, of course, we find out it's just a big trick, but they don't explain how. And uh, he shows up at Max's uh, workshop. Where... Yes, so I think interesting enough. Yeah, so Elliot shows up at Victor Marsh's uh, workshop. Victor Marsh's. Where... Yeah, the uh, the ventriloquist dummy from Mrs. Columbo. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that well, the, the, not, he's not the dummy. How he's do the, you he's re- a guy. How do you remember <laughs> that guy's name? So it's called Google, and it's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the same set that was used, and um, I don't a, 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 think so. I don't a, a, a riddle, a riddle for puppets. I don't think. So. I think it was. I, yeah, no, yeah. it's not. Yes, no. yes. There was no, there was no guillotine, or guillotine, or you want to call it. <laughs> but they, they did remove the the, the scary clown doll for, <laughs> in the in the baby high chair. But uh, 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 that was so. a basement. This is a warehouse. Same set. Same. Same set though. Okay, all right, I'll roll it looked, with it. It looked I'll roll like the same. It. Okay, all right. Um, and uh, this is where we learn. Oh, uh, Anthony, uh, Anthony. I'm calling him by the actor's name, and he and I are on a first name basis apparently. Mm. So uh, Blake brings a gun with him and pulls it on uh, on a uh, Max, and uh, apparently he was planning to shoot him probably until he right. got to the warehouse there and so that there was a completely more appropriate murder weapon right there yeah i didn't quite understand why didn't he just shoot him well i think that he realized uh, he made up a plan right there he improvised madly and decided that he was going to use the guillotine that uh, dyson was working on to kill him okay so by the way i uh, okay the, the, okay, I kept thinking that it might be a fake magic trick, or that it was a real magic. I'm sorry, I I was trying to figure out whether or not that is an actual magic trick. The guillotine, where basically you know you, you put a head of lettuce or something in it, you, you the guillotine goes down, chops the lettuce in half, but then you put somebody else, somebody's head in there. The guillotine goes down, but actually does not chop their head off, but it ends up. The blade ends up. You see the blade beneath the person's head, so as if it went, it, yeah. it, as if it went through their head. Now, 
I actually went online and tried to figure this out because there are some douchey magicians that will, you know, reveal their tricks. Um, and uh, I've, you mean they reveal their tricks to non magicians? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. There, there, there was a. Sh- There's a code involved here. Yeah. It's it's yeah. Um, there was a uh, a video I found of a boy in India that had it wasn't a guillotine, but it was very much like the. Um, the, the you know the little finger guillotine that yeah. that the kid puts Columbo's finger, um, which by the way is the second time Columbo does that in history. But um, he revealed how that trick is done. Okay, but that was this was this little kid from India was was he on roller skates? No, why? Oh, like Tommy in this one. Oh, oh shit. Okay, yeah, that's right. Or was it roller? Did skates you watch or... this episode? <laughs> Oh, I got to talk about that little kid in a minute, though. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the finger guillotine—I know how it's done, but the uh-huh. the actual—I can't. I I really want to know if that's an actual magic trick, because when there, the, it, I think it depends on the way you put the uh, what, what did he call it? The collar on top of the person. If you put it one way, it's safe. If you put it the mm-hmm. other way, it's not safe. That's the that's trick. My but the, yeah, that's my understanding of it. But yeah. the mechanics of it. No matter when you look at that collar, the blade's going to go through that collar. No matter which way the collar is put on, it doesn't make any sense. So, the only thing I can think of is there's something that it keeps the blade from going all the way down if you reverse the collar, uh, like maybe maybe a um, some kind of little metal stud blocks the blade from continuing if you don't put it in the correct spot. I don't know. It's my but you still see the blade come down. Below the person's head, I don't. But know. But also keep keep in mind the blades at an angle. Yeah, it's not like a like a razor blade. It's not straight. It's at an angle. Mm. That's the only thing I can think of. I don't know. I'm not a magician. I I, and if I was, I couldn't tell you. So, well, I couldn't. Anyway, so what he does is um, Max uh, keeps working on his little guillotine trick. And uh, 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 Blake just picks up the collar, puts it on top of Max the wrong way, and cuts his head off with the with the guillotine. Yeah, very bloody. Murder. And what? Uh, yes, and then we see blood in this one. Yeah, that was that was intense. And uh, and actually, that's all we see of the murder. Uh, and then we cut to Columbo, but um, there, th- that's not all because he does more to the crime scene that they don't show us. Um, and yes, I, with a screwdriver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, that confused me. I was like, should I rewatch it? Yeah, because I don't remember him fiddling with screwdrivers. But and I think the reason they did not show him doing more at the crime scene was because people were like, okay, this is Columbo's big return from the seventies. It's twenty five freaking minutes into the movie. I think it's time we bring Columbo in now. You know, I guess. Uh, which you could tell by the way that uh, Columbo enters in his car, and he's in the dark, and there's a silhouette of him lighting the. Cigar. It was very cool. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he goes to the crime, and there's a cop outside the crime, the scene of the crime, and and uh, he says, uh, "You had a baby, didn't you?" And the cop says, "Yeah." What's the baby's name? Harry. That's a great name for a baby. That's not. That's a horrible name for a baby. <laughs> oh, it's not that bad. Um, yeah, it would have been funny. It would have been funny if they, uh, if he said his name was Peter or something like that. Kind of a, oh my know. God, no, no, no. That's like the doctor saying Doctor Who, Doctor Who. On okay, on... We, we, no more Doctor Who. Okay, yeah, episode. I'm sorry, we're not going to talk about Doctor Who anymore. No more. Um. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so the the street that Columbo drives up on when he's going to the bar, did it look familiar to you? Was it the same set that they used for Murder, Smoke, and Shadows? I think it was. Yeah, it looked it looked identical. Yeah, because right right where he would have gone for the bar entrance was the alley where um, that guy was killed. So I don't know. I think it is the same. I think they used the same set. Yeah, it's rare that they use a set in Colombo, but it was really obvious there. Mm-hmm. And then they cut to him getting out of the car, and you see a car drive by. So maybe I don't know. I don't. Hmm. Know. So, so yeah. So Columbus called. Um, he's not called there because they found the murder yet, or found the body yet. It's just because the owner 
of the bar uh, is noticing uh, droplets of blood coming from the ceiling. Yes. That's 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 pretty intense for me for a Columbo episode. Yes. Yes, that's some CSI shit there. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, by the way, the guy that uh, owned the bar, the bartender, the former cop bartender, second mm-hmm. former cop bartender we see in Colombo, by the way. First one being the guy in Identity Crisis. It's in the in the uh, in the uh, belly dancing bar, played by uh-huh. Val Avery, I think. But that's right. Yeah. Yes. He, with, Le- with Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. And uh, does he look familiar at all? Yeah, he's been in a lot of mafia movies. Yeah. Uh, what what have I seen? I, was, he, was he in the, the Godfather films? Uh, I think he. I don't know. Is it, no, is Robert is Robert Costanzo? Yeah, or something like that? Robert Costanzo. Yeah. Um, he was in Total Recall. <laughs> yes, he was. He was. The, he was right. Schwarzenegger's like coworker. It's like, I, I, that's not the first film I think of when I think of him. That's because you know you saw it on TV. Recall, Recall, Recall. But of course he's in on it. He's one of the guys. Oh. Yeah, he was a bad guy. You know, he always plays a bad guy. Yeah, yeah. Always a mafioso kind of character. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. In fact, he even says that to Columbo. Hey, Columbo, I'm uh, so and so. I'm Italian. He actually says that. <laughs> I'm Italian. Oh. Um, what next? Oh, this... That's a spicy meatball. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's have offensive Italian stereotypes <laughs> on the podcast there. <laughs> even though you're Italian, I guess it's okay. I don't know. I guess. Uh, All right, so yeah, blood from the ceiling. Uh, so we, uh, Columbo, they cut a hole in the wall to to get entrance into because we find out later that the um, the entrance has been locked, just like a forgotten lady. The the doors are all locked mm, from the inside. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Um, so they have to they have to <laughs> saw their way through a a wall. Um, and that's when uh, they discover the body, right, uh, in the head. Yeah, they find out that Max Dyson lost his head. Wow! <laughs> so yeah, there's a couple weird things that we see. Uh, one is that uh, that Columbo looks at some screwdrivers, which you know I love clue, Steve. Yes. Um, I didn't remember that clue at all. I couldn't figure out why is he looking at. Is it because there is a screwdriver in his hand, and a, as well as one on the floor? Why yeah, no, I just figured. Well, because I, I, Elliot wanted to make it look like it was an accident that he was working on the thing, and but see if if it was indeed an accident, wouldn't, wouldn't you put your hands up to try to stop the blade? I think that it would have come down so quickly that he wouldn't have had a chance. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, but um. Yeah. If you were able to stop it with your hand that quickly, you would have been able to move your head out of the way quickly. I guess. Yeah. Oh, but he. But uh, well, it's uh, definitely a head, head and shoulders better idea than what we would have happened. I guess. So. Yeah. Did we, what was that? What? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, stupid. <laughs> did <you make> a, <laughs> I said uh, as head and shoulders better than what I guess could have happened. But um, did you just make a shampoo joke? <laughs> no. It, it, never mind. Just move. Move along. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Move along. <laughs> so, uh... Try to be punny. <laughs> oh. Um, so, oh, we learned about um, the, I guess, Max's friend and store manager, Bert. Yeah. Um, yeah. What did you think of Bert? Uh, he was nice. He was cute. Um, cute? We see, uh, I don't, not cute as in like, oh, wow, I'd tap that. But cute as in like, just a nice little old man. And, you know, after the crime scene, Columbo's talking to him, and he's like, you know, they, Columbo's like, well, I'm off duty. I'm going to join you for a drink. And they put on wizard hats and toast each other. It was, I, I like Bert. Is it Bert? Mm-hmm. That guy died, by the way, just a couple months ago in real life. His, his, uh, oh, sorry. I can't remember what his first name is, but his last name is Green. And he died in November. We were recording this in January. So, wow. Yeah. He was uh, pretty old, probably. Because he's pretty hmm. old in this, so yeah. So yeah, poor Bert. We we also find or Columbo finds out from Bert that you know he wasn't. And Max didn't seem depressed. As a matter of fact, he was known for uh, uh, proving that there there was no true psychics. You know, he he would go after them like the Amazing Randy. He, you know, he actively went after them to prove them all 
as charlatans and faker, fakers and whatever. Um, so we, we find out, though, that there was one person that he was not able to prove wrong. That was the day before his murder. And I think that's what tips Columbo off, that there is uh, there's something suspicious right. going on. Yeah. There is a lot that happens that we don't see. Um, well, no, that's not true. Uh, but hmm. so he, okay, so <laughs> he goes to the I can't remember the name of the institute where uh, Doctor Hall works. Uh, the Anaheim. It's I not. Thought I, I thought I thought I wrote it down somewhere. It's Edelman, Edelman, Anaheim, something like that. The, the institute. Uh, it's, it's, it's a think tank. Yeah, another think tank. What's with the fucking think tanks? <laughs> They're all evil. <laughs> This is think- every think tank in Colombo is evil. Is there ever you you know Colombo Colombo better than I do? Is there ever a good think tank? I don't think so. You know what? You know the, you know what the think tanks that we've seen before weren't evil. This think tank is evil because she's like well, defrauding the freaking government. The one with Robbie the robot oh, that was an evil. Oh one. yeah, well yeah, uh, they had child labor the, issues and yeah, this the mile, sky high mile whatever one. That one was an evil think tank. Um, they weren't evil. It was just a little girl there that was evil. But... No, the girl wasn't evil. It was I'm um... making a joke. That was me being punny. Anyway. Uh-huh. Uh... <laughs> well, so there's other think tanks that are evil. There's the one, I know there's... the one in um, the one with the Robert Foxworth. Uh, Grand Deceptions with the, um, yeah. Yeah, the Special Projects Fund. That's not really a Special Projects Fund. It's about smuggling weapons. Yes. Yeah. Um, Evil. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's interesting. Um, well, he goes to visit Dr. Hull because he wants to talk to Elliot Blake. And mm-hmm. th- there's a scene where she says t- to him, okay, just, I want you to um, stay here. I'll go get Mr. Blake. So, um, instead of staying there, he does something very un ish He sees somebody, a bunch of military people being given a tour, and so he decides that he's going to blend in with them, with them somehow and, you know, take the tour. And we're treated to some bizarre set pieces of... There's... Okay. There's, there's a, a group of people taking uh psychic tests in a room and they they're they're international and you can tell they're international they're from other countries because they're all dressed in different (laughs) carbs okay and if you've ever seen like the movie the first austin powers movie and Mm -hmm. the united nations in that movie that's what that reminded me of there's like a zimbabwe guy with the colorful robes there's a lady from india with the you know the sarong or the sari and in amid amidst all of them there's a native american guy with and he's dressed practically in like native american like old western garb as i just it's just like so stupid looking um well there there was one when they walked by the a group of a bunch of international psychics and Columbo whispers to somebody He's Indian. Yeah. <laughs> like what? <laughs> and and we learned that plants uh, can feel fear. Plants express fear. Um, because... Now now I've heard that's true. Really? And yes, that, that's an actual thing that they. Uh, and I've tried looking up. I, I've I've heard it uh, in discussions. I've read about it, but I but I can never really find uh, an actual scientific study that I can point to where that's coming from yeah and i'm i'm actually on my phone right now looking for that stuff what the name of that study is i can't find any truth behind it but i have heard it and there's a lot of people there's a lot of like um a lot of news sites that talk about it um and they say you know plants can hear and sense when they're being eaten um they 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 do release a type of I don't know, not a scream like they like you see in, in Colombo where you hear, ah! but that, uh, but you they do communicate between each other, so they know that almost like a warning to the others, the other plants. Hey, I'm being eaten, you know, kind of heads wow. up. I guess I don't. Yeah, so that's actually really creepy. Well, and I think if if that's true, like I said, I would love to know what the actual study is, the name of the study, or who did the study. I just can't find that. I'm sure it's got to be somewhere. I need more than two minutes of research before a podcast yeah <laughs> really fine yeah but uh but uh, yeah so 
I always thought if that's true, if plants do sense and are aware that they're being eaten alive, that's worse than uh, eating meat. Yeah, which, you know, you put you put the animal down, uh, you process them. You know, they don't really feel any pain. So vegetarians are probably the worst sadists yes! on the planet. Yes. Assuming if that's the plant, true, assuming if, 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 the plant, if that's true, yeah. Assuming the plant's still alive once it gets to their plate. I mean, obviously, you know. Uh. But if you, if you're eating a head of lettuce or carrots, I mean, that, that's still that's still alive. Like, that's, ah, that's a plant. Help me! Ow, it hurts! It burns! <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so it, pick it up from here. El- he meets Elliot Blake. Uh, Elliot. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh no! Elliot says, "Oh, uh, Lieutenant Columbo." And Columbo goes, "Wow, that's amazing! How did you know that?" And he goes, "Well, the badge you have on your jacket." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, that was very funny. Oh, that was funny. Yeah. Well. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so. I shut you down on that no, one. I, I don't no, know yeah, it that. was so funny. I I had to like brace myself. So um, he has a big conversation with Elliot. Elliot shows him the room where... Actually, I have to stop calling him Elliot. I should call him Blake, Blake. because, you know, these are assholes. and We don't want to be calling them by their first name. And uh, so he... Oh, it's not, it's not like you would call Ted Bundy Ted. Right, right? exactly. Mm-hmm. That would be yeah. just... Yeah. So he uh, he shows, you know, Columbo where they did the test, and yada, yada, yeah. yada, and, you know, and... Uh, Columbo says, oh, okay, sir, well, uh, and then he walks out, and then he comes right back in. Oh, just one more thing, sir. Um, can you read my mind? <laughs> I actually like that line. Well, he says it, like, so, like, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't, like, um, I, if I met somebody like that, I wouldn't say, can you read my mind? I would, I would find that rude and patronizing, and, you know, but, but Blake goes along with it, and it's just so cute the way Columbo asks. Sir, yeah. can you read my mind? So he does the uh, the test with them. He does the the, yeah. the card, pick one card, then write it down in this, in, you know, in on the uh, piece of paper. And he's like, "Oh, you you were thinking about a triangle, but before that, you were thinking about a circle, and you changed your mind." And Columbo's like, "Oh my God, that is so amazing." And uh, I think a, laying it, I think Columbo's laying it on a really thick. Um, yeah. I don't think that Columbo thinks it's this guy yet, but I think that he suspects. That, you know, he may be in a, a short list of suspects. But um, he acts like it's amazing. When you saw that, was it was were you like, oh, that's like so easy, that's so obvious how he can? Well, tell. I I mean, I, I try to think how he, that could be done in real life, and apparently I guess correctly is just watching the movement of the pencil. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Try it with somebody, and they'll say, "Of course, you can tell. You can just tell what I'm drawing." Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So next scene, we are finally introduced to the uh, the true star of the show, Tommy, <laughs> the little boy magician. Okay, who so carries around a little finger guillotine or guillotine. <laughs> so okay, um, okay, wh- okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, no. no. So he, he does a card trick with Columbo. I I, I don't I don't. I don't know what what's the fascination with young kids, and then Columbo taking these young kids out for for <laughs> milkshakes and yeah, hamburgers. Right? Yeah, and by the way, that trick where he's like, "Oh, pick a card." Um, oh wait, your card's actually on the top here. Um, did you notice that uh, it was the Ace of Diamonds? Did you notice that when he lifted the deck up, you could see the Ace of Diamonds? So basically, the whole deck was an Ace was all Ace of Diamonds. It was not. A, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, but it, I, I didn't see that. No, that's a stupid trick. Um, but. Uh, so I, I looked Tommy up, okay? Yeah. So have you ever seen the movie Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? Yes, love that. I have, I have the copy of uh, that movie. Oh, really? Yes, well, you will find that uh, Michael Bacall, who played Tommy, was a uh-huh. co-writer on that movie. He wrote, really? He wrote it with Edgar Wright, yeah. Huh. And he, uh, are you a big uh, Quentin Tarantino fan? Not really. Okay. Well, <laughs> but what, what, what do you do? With he that? has been in a number of Quentin Tarantino movies. He was in Inglorious Bastards, Django Unchained. Um, I want to say one more, but I can't remember. It's not The Hateful Eight, but yeah, he is still uh, working more or less. Uh, he was born in 1973. Really? Yeah. Huh. 
the, the wow. picture of him on IMDb is not very flattering. No, no. I mean, you could tell it's him, though, right? Man, if he was born in 1973, that means that when I saw this when it first came out on TV, I was two years younger than him. Hmm. Hmm. You were born in 1973, right? Yeah. Oh. I was indeed. I was looking through his uh, IMDb filmography here and seeing what he's been in. He's been in, oh, he's in the Hey Arnold TV show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, The Nanny. Oh, he must have played a relative of hers. Oh, he was in Wings. Remember that show? Oh, man, yeah. With um, Stephen Webb and somebody something. I don't remember. But yeah, with Monk was in there and the guy from um, Sideways. Right, yeah. The 1989 reboot of Lassie. Okay, well, missed that one. Punky Brewster. Punky Brewster, wow. Wow. The way back uh, machine is... The 1987 version of Beauty and the Beast. Do you remember that show? Oh, with Linda Hamilton and Ron Perlman? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, and, and I'll stop after this because it gets, it's getting crazy. But Mr. Belvedere. He was in Mr. Belvedere. Wow. Okay. Huh. Was he the main kid in Mr. Belvedere or was he... I, I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. Is, he played a character named Dwayne, so probably not. Okay. I don't remember any of the character names in that one except for... Mr. Belvedere. So. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he could have been the older brother. I, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I know oh. Mr. Belvedere, and then there was the um, the dad who was some sort of sports celebrity, right? Yeah, uh, Bob Eubanks. Bob. That was Bob. Uh, shit. I know. I, I gotta look it up now. It's... So when did we turn into the Mr. Belvedere podcast? <laughs> Wasn't there a Saturday Night Live skit about Mr. Belvedere? It was like the Mr. Buzzer? Bel- Mr. Belvedere. Bob Euchre. Bob Euchre. Bob Euchre, yes. George, uh, he played George Owens. Oh, he's still alive. Holy shit. Man, oh man. Okay. What what what, what did he play? Was Did he play for the Cubs? I know he was a catcher. Okay. I remember that. He was, uh, yes, you're right. My God. Yes, he was a catcher uh, for the Braves, the Cardinals, and the Phillies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Still alive. Born in 19... People really don't care. No, Born in 1934. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, where did we leave off? With Tommy? Uh, the, the, Tommy, oh yeah. Just... And so, yeah. So, Colombo now goes back up to the workshop. And, strange enough, I would think that being that the guillotine was the murder weapon, that would be uh, taken as evidence. Right. So why is it still there? I don't know. It's a really good question. I don't know. Uh, but he asks uh, Bert to demonstrate and then to explain it to him. Mm-hmm. And that's where we find out about the magician code. If you're not a magician, I can't tell you. Right. Uh, but I thought it was... I would, oh, go ahead. I'm going to call bullshit on that. Um, because I think if there's been a homicide, that they yeah. should be able to tell the police how it works. Yeah, it's not like, it's not like he's a doctor or, you know... Um, a psychiatrist or psychologist, you know what I mean? It's it's not, and not only that, I'm sure Columbo could find. I'm sure there was a book that would explain it. You know. Well, I looked on the internet and it, and I couldn't find any explanation. So it does bring to mind um, the we haven't talked about this one yet, but the Jack A- Cassidy, I almost said Jack Cassidy, Jack Cassidy, one where he plays the magician, and at first yeah. he he's he refuses to tell Columbo where he was at the time of the murder. And I'm thinking, well, you know, it's there's been a murder. You're going to have to, you know. But, yeah. Um, so th- we get this scene where Columbo invites Blake over to the crime scene so that Blake can, Elliot Blake can, like, read the vibes in the room. And... Oh, all right. Are we, oh, wait. Are we, can, I just want to say a few things first okay, before sorry. we okay. jump to that. Because there's a few thing, interesting scenes before that. But before we leave where uh, Bert is refusing to explain the guillotine trick, one, you can still see blood stains on the wood floor. <laughs> really? So that's, really? Yeah, there, there's like some red stuff. It looked like blood stains. It was something, some kind of red stain on the wood floor underneath the guillotine. Huh. Um, what else? Uh, oh, I already brought up the part about it not being 
confiscated by the uh, police department. But you know they they do th- things differently in L.A. Yeah, um, uh, although I, I you know we've never been to L.A. So yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's go to the very next scene, which is the funeral. Now this oh. is the most amazing funeral. If all funerals were this entertaining, <laughs> everybody would show up. If you if there's ever if I ever hear of a magician having a funeral, I'm going. <laughs> I don't care if I don't even know who the person is. I'm going because if it's like that. How entertaining was that, huh? It was far more entertaining than Mrs. Columbo's fake funeral. <laughs> and and the funeral of that guy with the lottery numbers in, uh, what was, I don't remember his name. Um, maybe it was Eddie. Remember uh, the one with Rip Torn where he kills his nephew? Uh, yes. Death, yes. It's the jackpot. Uh, yeah. There's been so many funeral scenes in Columbo. It all looks like it's the same, uh, same location, <laughs> yes. too. I don't know if it is, but it just seems like it is. Yeah. But, you know, we're not from L.A., so we don't know. Yeah, exactly. Here down in Texas, we, we don't have cemeteries that look like that at all. So. Okay. Um, so he meets Elliot Blake at the funeral. I didn't. I actually tuned out during the funeral scene. I was making notes, so I wasn't looking. But what exactly do they do at the funeral? I, I think that they... Well, first of all, the uh, the... The person who's reading off the last rites is in a... He looks like a Satanist. Um, he's got a black suit on with the, the, the collar, the uh, priest collar, and a, to- a black top hat. Uh-huh. And he just looks he just looks like somebody who probably worships the devil. Um, wow. In that outfit. And then you have all the other magicians all dressed in white tuxedos. Uh-huh. Uh, and as, as, you know, people... P- Typically, at a funeral, people will get a rose and they will walk in a single file line and throw the rose or flower into the on top of the casket, um, and they walk off for the next person. Kind of a, like a last moment to say goodbye. In this case, the magicians were doing tricks. <laughs> so one um, made a wand appear in his hand. He broke it in half, threw it in there. Uh, another one had flowers magically appear from nowhere through the through the bouquet of flowers in there. Another one had a pigeon yeah uh, up here and then released the pigeon thank god he didn't throw the didn't snap the pigeon's neck and throw it in there <laughs> like in that movie yeah <laughs> but uh, but yeah so no very entertaining and even colombo had a smile on his face He's like this is this is great this uh, is obviously that was a great another yet another great funeral arranged by none other than eric prince yes uh, the prince funeral <laughs> All right, Prince Peter Home. Now that was later, right? This this is the new, the first one. Yeah, of the new... this is the first one of the new ones. That one was like the third from the last. I, I think I said no in our podcast. It was the second last, but it's not as third no, from the last. Prince would be pissed off because they were two seconds over. Uh, <laughs> being a retentive jerk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So he uh, Columbo. Okay, so he brings Blake over to the scene of the crime, and mm-hmm. Blake does this, like, five-minute, like, walking around, sensing yeah. shit, and he notices that the bullets that he brought in the gun that uh, he originally intended to use on Dyson, they're, they're still on the, those bullets are still on the table, or one of them is still on the table. So he palms the bullet and puts it in his pocket. Okay. Yeah. Now... Here's my issue. That bullet was placed there by Columbo. Okay? Because he took the rest of the bullets and left one bullet there. He knows it's Blake after Blake palms the bullet, for sure. Mm -hmm. He definitely Mm -hmm. knows it's Blake then. At what point does Blake go... So when... You know... When does Blake go from being a... Just a suspect to Columbo knowing that he's the murderer? I, I had a lot of trouble trying to figure that out. Well, I when did he go from suspect to murderer? Yeah, I uh, mean, he became suspect when he was the guy that Max Dyson was finally outwitted by. Um, yeah. But there was nothing to indicate that he was the murderer until that. Huh. That's I don't know. That's what I I had pro I had a problem with that. Like you know. I mean, maybe he suspects he's a fake psychic, but that doesn't mean that he's a... Well, 
Oh, if see that's the other thing know. is that if if Dyson if he passed Dyson's test, that yeah. would mean that he wouldn't have a, ki- a, a a motive to kill Dyson at all. It would actually be the other way around. So I'm not really sure why he gloms on to Dyson. Or I'm sorry, why he gloms on to to Elliot Blake like that. You know, I, that's not clear to me. And you can you help? No, I'm, I'm trying to think why he would. I, I don't know. Obviously, I mean, I, I, I almost would. I think his, my if, if I didn't know any better, I would assume it would be Bert would be my primary suspect. But yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah, there may be something going on with Bert. Yeah, because and Bert, you know, is a magician, and I guess he would inherit the store. I don't know. But. Well, Bert would also probably know how to lock a door behind him because he's a magician, and he and he's refusing to tell how the murder device works. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. well, whatever. Um, so yeah. So Elliot Palms, or well, you don't want to call him Elliot, right? Uh, I, I want to call him Elliot. Okay, I'm call sorry. him Elliot. That's fine. Fine, do that. Uh, Palms a bullet. Um, <laughs> uh, but we, but Columbo doesn't believe. Oh, before no, wait. Before I even go into that, uh, I want to. I want to talk about uh, the book that Columbo is reading. Mm. The uh, what was it called? Dyson on mind reading. Yeah, very very direct and to the point. And I'm thinking, I'm glad he's reading that book, as opposed to the transformation of Mrs. McTwig. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know that book. It's it revolves around an Irish lady mm. who wins the lottery, goes to Paris, meets a midget Russian <laughs> prince. Um, it's great, great read, great read if you ever. <laughs> It's only a, it's only like a hundred pages long. It's yeah. very short. Yeah. Take, it won't take you long to get through it. It might make you fall asleep though, <laughs> and never wake up. But you know, no, that would be it. that would that would be a reason why uh, why Max killed himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, okay. So uh, Elliot is trying to make Columbo believe that it was suicide. Uh-huh. Say uh, the air is uh, oppressive. Uh, you know, it's it's. What else did he say? But he, he tried to describe it being, it was a suicide. It's it's actually a scene that could have been extremely silly and hokey, but the actor Anthony Andrews pulls it off pretty well. I thought it was pretty hokey. Really? Well, well, you thought it was hokey? Yeah, yeah, a little. But he was playing it to be hokey, though. Okay. I guess. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. And, so, and also uh, but, the oh. fact that Columbo invited him over there to have him do this. Um, to uh, you know, it means that um, means that uh, he already suspects Blake, and he, yeah. this is basically a trap because after he does this and Blake makes it look like it was a suicide, Columbus explains why it can't be a suicide <laughs> or an right. accident, and it must be murder because he bought some corned beef and cabbage. Yeah, <laughs> and who would buy who would buy a big old thing of corned beef and, and a, a head of cabbage if they were going to commit suicide? I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all, does it? No, because you could get the corned beef and cabbage because you're planning to eat, but you're still uh-huh. depressed, and then you bring the corned beef and cabbage home, and you know you're like, you know what, this is it. I'm just feeling really depressed. I'm going to kill myself. I mean, I'm being serious. That's I think that. Uh... Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, he was talking about this. This is where we find out about the screwdriver. That, um, that Max was using a flathead screwdriver, mm-hmm. and the screws he was working on was Phillips. That's a really good clue, by the way. I like that. No, clue. It, no, it's not because Why? you can use a flathead screwdriver on Phillips head screws if you want. Very easy. It's just one slot instead of two. I've used I've used a flathead. Yeah, on Phillips. you're right. You're right. So I didn't think that was now. If it was the other way around, if he had been using a Phillips. And it was a flathead screw. That wouldn't work. That's absolutely true. Hmm. You know, huh, that's that's true. Why didn't they catch that? Okay. Well, if I if I was if I was Elliot or Elliot Blake, I would have called that, but whatever. And how did okay, yeah. Also, um, I just wanted to point out because I'm watching this with the sound turned off while we're doing this. Um, mm-hmm. One uh, suspicious thing that that Elliot does, Elliot Blake does before Columbo invites him to the scene of the crime, is that yeah. he not only shows up at Dyson's funeral, but he sheds a tear as well. 
So I think that Columbo, that makes Columbo suspect that um, Elliot or Blake may be, you know, there may be more to their relationship than meets the mm-hmm. eye. But it's just ridiculous. Why would he even go to the funeral in the first place? Because he's supposed to have just met this guy like a couple days ago. So, But you know what? If you look at Mrs. Columbo, rest in peace, Mrs. Columbo, everybody and their mothers at that funeral too. So. Yeah, and they're all crying like babies. Yeah. yeah. So Columbo uh, decides that he's going to go to a pool party. I love it when Columbo shows up unexpectedly to these things. Oh, it's it's uh, the Marina del Rey Hotel, which I looked up. I looked for pictures of it, and that yeah. is actually where it's filmed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Looks looks like a classy joint. It is very um, classy looking. Yes. And that's when uh, Columbo shows uh, Elliot Blake that he knows the card, the trick to the card, uh, mind reading trick. Uh, uh, but yeah, he, he apparently showed it off to Mrs. Mrs. C, and she was just flabbergasted. <laughs> I'm what sure do you say? she was. Yeah, fl- flabbergasted. My goodness. <laughs> um, it's like the anyway, so I, I don't I don't know what what the point of that scene was. Just the Columbo let Elliot know that he's on to him now that. I know you're a fake psychic, and I, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question, because he doesn't talk about anything else. That's mm-hmm. the only thing. The The scene between him and Blake in the, at the murder, the crime scene, is much more productive. Um, but in all, in all this, there's a, there's a subplot that um, the, mil, the government is going to, has basically going, they've hired Blake, and they're going to... Uh, yeah. Fly him somewhere, and he's going to have to change his name, and he's going to be, you know, involved in some to- some top secret projects. So he knows, in, in you know, in the back of his mind, that within a day or two, all of this will be over, and he'll be away scot free. At least, yeah, yeah. As soon, as, as soon as he, yeah, as soon as he, get, if he can get away with it, Columbo can't follow yeah. him. So yeah, he's protected. Yeah, um, uh, which makes me think, you know, if that went through and he ended up working for the government, how long would it be? Before they found out he was a complete fucking fake, you know. Mm-hmm. So right. Mm. So Elliot, you know, he's he's a little horny, and he, <laughs> this is his last chance to sleep with Paula. Uh, so oh, this is my best, my my favorite bad line in the in the whole thing. <laughs> I already know what yeah. it is. Uh, so uh, you know, Paula doesn't look too bad actually. Um, you know, she reminds me of somebody. I, I gotta look her up. What? What's the actress's name? Um, okay, so Paula Hall. I I don't know, but I looked her up, um, and she played. I think she played John Candy's wife in a movie called Summer Rental. Really? Yeah. Huh. Did you ever see that movie, Summer Rental? Yeah, a long time ago, though. Oh, that's a really good movie. You really can't go wrong with John Candy. He didn't make a lot of bad movies. Um, let's see. Karen Austin. Yep, Summer Rental. Uh. She was in a movie called Bitch Slap. <laughs> oh, that's an Academy Award winning thin thing there. Uh, so, yeah. So, he, he finally he has his last, I guess, one night fling with her. Um, and he's, he's calling uh, the front office, I guess, to make sure it gets billed to the the Institute, which is real classy. Um, and I guess, I don't know why he decides to come clean with, with Paula. I would have not said anything to her and just disappear. Yeah, I know. Well, um, the decent thing is to tell her, but I guess so. But yeah, so she gets angry that because he says, you know, I'm, I'm going to be away for a while. Um, and what does she say, Sean? Since it's your favorite line, I'm going to let you say it. Well, he basically gr- breaks up with her, and uh, holy shit! Okay, I'm so sorry. You know what she was in? She was she was in an episode of the 1980s version of The Twilight Zone, where um, she, there's um. She finds out that there's these blue people coming and, and rearranging shit. Yes, you know she stops time. Yes, right? yes. No, no, no. She doesn't. It's not the one where she stops time. But um, oh god, Tom knows this. Um, it's called a matter of minutes, and it's I guess when nobody's looking, there are these blue people that come uh-huh. and rearrange stuff. Um, oh god, that's like Stephen King's insomnia. I'm so sorry. Okay, this is so off. You know that's that's based off of a um, an old a real one? thing. No, no, like I mean, there are certain people who, uh, of course, when they take DMT, 
<laughs> How else would you see these things? No. Um, uh, but supposedly people who, you know, don't talk to each other, two, two, you know, completely different different people that don't communicate to one another who experience a, a, the same phenomenon. And that's what makes it really interesting is um, I think it's under DMT that these people see what they call little machine elves. And when 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 people question them, they get similar answers, which makes it even more bizarre that these strangers from different times, from different locations, all are explaining the same thing and, 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 and a similar answers to their questions it's like what are you what are you doing and basically that that's the th- that's what they say they are they they build the the, the world around us right yeah that's exactly little, what the episode yes but but, yeah, but these are but people call them like they're little machine elves huh and they're they're everywhere and but you can only perceive them under dmt but again you've got you may have you know uh, somebody on one side of the country and a, a different person on another both explain the same entity but it's always under DMT, which is weird. Wow. So wow. I don't. But that's another thing. That's that's for did our you, future did you, podcast. Did, so. did you did you learn that from the bedtime stories podcast? No, no. I've I've heard that from okay. uh, some other podcast I used to listen to. Oh. All right. Where they were discussing DMT and um, and what was the name of that guy? Anyways, whatever. Sorry. What were what, we talking about now? I can't remember. Oh yeah, these she... little blue people. Okay. So. <laughs> Yeah, sorry everybody. We uh, go wow. off these little rabbit trails every once in a while. I th- I, I blame yeah, the wine every personally. Once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so yeah. So oh, oh, his name was McKinnon. The guy was McKinnon. So it was something something. Uh, go on. Sorry, right, apologize. His name is Jeff Skeffington. His name is Jeff Skeffington. Um, so she says to him, he breaks up with her basically, which, you know, is kind of the honest thing to do. Like, you know, to tell her, you know, this is our last night together. I'm, I'm going to leave. And she's like, basically, well, you know what, is that what you do? You're just, you know, use me and you know, Mm -hmm. what are we going to do without you? And you know what, Elliot, read my mind. It's very graphic. It tells you what you can do to yourself. (laughs) And that's the line that I remember from watching this. That's a very good line. I yeah. like it. It's a good line, but it's kind of hokey at the same time. So we move from a evening of sex uh, to... <laughs> I don't think there was any sex that evening. I really don't. I, I think that it was done. They had already finished. Oh, you think they were... Uh, oh, it was post-coital. Post-coital. Yes. I love using that term. Post-coital. Coital? Coital. coital. So uh, we move from that scene to Columbo having a milkshake with a young boy. Um, <laughs> what? Well, no, he has made friends with this young kid because obviously Bert's not going to help because he's got questions about magic and Bert is being a total douchebag because, I mean, he's trying to, like, solve this murder case and Bert is not helping. Not, and it's, it's like, he even says it to Bert, this is your friend. I'm on a murder case. And Bert's like, no, can't tell you because you're not a magician. Oh, screw you, Bert. Uh, yeah. But so he's, he gets the help of Tommy. So Tommy is helping him. Um, oh, do you, do you like, wait. And he explains the... Okay, go ahead. I'm but, sorry. He's, yeah, he, he wants. Well, no. So he, he explains the trick to uh, to Tommy. How you know? How can um, Elliot view these three images of this randomness that makes no sense? And you know, of course, Tommy black. Excuse me, blackmails him and says, you know, buy me another hamburger milkshake and I'll think about it. And Col- I mean, that's Col- cheap. Colombo has a great line that well, you know how to make money disappear. Yeah. Now, okay, so our uh, I, I want I don't want to say our counterpart episode, our, our counterpart podcast, because uh, I don't think these people will do have anything to do with us because I think they hate us. But um, what the, the just one more thing podcast? Why would they hate us? I don't think they hate us. I just think that uh, we're you know the redheaded you know stepbrother or whatever. Um, we're the Mrs. Columbo. <laughs> yeah, we're the Torchwood of their Doctor Who. Um, no, I said no more Doctor Who. Okay, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Um, when they did this episode, they had on a guy that, who was an actual magician. Because they have on, you know... The, oh, that's cool. The, the, there's two of them, just like there, there's us. And then they always have a guest to talk about. Mm-hmm. And they always, or at least at one point, they tried to have the guest have something to do with whatever the episode was on. So it was an actual magician. And cool. he said that... What was so realistic, actually, about that kid um, was, first of all, not that the kid is based on a real person, but that there are kids that are like that. Because I think if you're going to be 
like Penn and Teller that you are a street magician or a street magician. You, I mean, yeah. it's hard. It's not easy. I mean, you have to practice and practice and practice, and it takes a lot of dedication. And you're going to be like that kid. And there was a. a I remember this guy saying there's a. He quotes that kid. He says to figure it out, you have to remember it's a trick, and never forget that it's a trick. Right. And if you just do not. Forget that and have that in the front of your mind all the time. You, you know, you'll figure it out. Which, of course, the kid does with Columbo's help. The the big uh, test that uh, Dyson gives uh, Elliot in the beginning. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what what happens next, Steve? I can't remember. Um, so uh, the next scene is uh, at the airport. So. Uh, Oh the, yes, the, yes, the yes, gover- yes. The government guy is basically saying he's saying, saying to Elliot. Now you understand you're leaving this life behind. Um, everything you know, you'll you know never be able to come back. Uh, we'll, we'll change your name. You know you, you won't be Elliot Blake anymore. And he says, "Do you understand?" And the guy goes, "Already forgot who Elliot Blake mm-hmm, was." Mm-hmm, <laughs> like mm-hmm. he's ready to go because he knows he's getting ready to beat Columbo. Mm-hmm. He just has to get on that plane. And it's done. He's gotten away with murder. <laughs> he's he's going to live a rich lifestyle. They even say we're going to pay you handsomely. Um, yeah, and it, it looks like he's on. He's he's going to win. And Except he opens <laughs> the plane door opens. Columbo's there's um, Columbo. That's awesome. That is such a. That's like one of my favorite Columbo entrances of all time. Oh, uh, I've got this uh, court order. Blah 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 blah. You know. And and so Columbo then um, goes and shows them. He does the same trick that Elliot Blake did, by uh, you know reading the minds of people that are miles away, looking at looking right. at land landmarks and. Well, and, and Columbo's really putting on an act too when he's in that isolation booth. Oh he's, yeah, he's sweating. He's got his eye closed. I mean, it's just yeah. <laughs> his eye. <laughs> he even at the end he even like puts his head down like. Bangs his head down like he's passing out or something, and uh, so um, from that point on, uh, not only has Elliot Blake's uh, girlfriend left him, but uh, the government no longer wants to hire him. They say, "Get lost, Elliot Blake. You are a loser." And uh, yeah, and and what I don't understand: this is not the first time that Columbo has helped the government out. Uh, you would think they would say, "Be like, thank." Thank you, Frank Colombo, for or whatever his first name is. Uh, you have saved us a lot of embarrassment, a lot of money. And you figured out something that none of our people could do. He never gets rewarded. He never gets a, a promotion. I, he never gets offered a job to work with the FBI, CIA, or whoever. Uh, it just... its I don't understand. They... they <laughs> Why does Columbo never get his just desserts? Because Columbo just enjoys doing what he does. He doesn't want to work behind a desk. He doesn't want to be a bartender. Yeah, he doesn't want to be a bart. That's right. Yeah. He, he he likes, you know, walking around, talking to people and looking at crime scenes. He doesn't Have you seen his office? It's gross. <laughs> No one's seen his office. What you... No, there's a couple episodes where he's in his there office. There is there is yeah. there is. Yeah. And it's gross. It's a terrible. It's a typical like government beige brown office with naga hide chairs and fake sawwood t- uh, it's just gross yeah um, so at the end at the end when uh the military guy says how did you do that and Kamo says ah i can't tell you because you're not you're not a magician i don't, at that at this point i had forgotten um because this is my second time to view but i had forgotten uh, on this viewing that we find out how th- the trick is done but we don't know yet and I'm thinking this is the end mm-hmm. and, it, and they're just going to say I'm not going to tell you how it ended but I solved the case I got really upset temporarily <laughs> at this point um, I thought it was just going to be like oh I'm not going to tell you how the trick happened but you know we're going to have to arrest Elliot Blake for the murder of Max well, uh, you know. yeah well yeah there's, but that's not proof of a murder he says I'm not going to tell you how it happened but maybe Mr. Blake can explain to you, which is the ultimate dig. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, Columbo now invites Elliot Blake back to Max's workshop. Uh, now, I now I know it's going to be the ending because Columbo has a paper bag with him. Oh, he does? Mm-hmm. I don't remember that. Because, you know, I didn't watch yeah. this episode for this. Uh <sighs> 
he does have a paperback. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so I know, I know, we're, this is the final scene. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this is when Columbo actually explains the trick. Um, How did you like the, the explanation of the trick? I make no, make, I I think that was really interesting. The, the only thing that my mind went back to and what we discussed earlier was how did he know that they would pick north, south, east, or west? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so let's say I have you come and stand... Okay, let's say it's in front of my house. I have you come and stand in front of my house. Some Somebody tells you to go north, south, east, or west, and you look in one of those directions. i got to have all four directions memorized. In order... Okay. Okay, so, you know... Um... And that means that he would have to memorize twelve different locations, four for each one, each one of the operatives in their car. Mm-hmm. Um, my problem with the trick, actually, it's a pretty clever trick. Is okay. So you, every book, every map that they look at, every book of maps, I should, what, no, every map book, it, every page is the same of the L.A. streets. Okay. Yeah, where did he get those? Yeah, how? Because uh, uh, Dyson and Blake, they had to make those up in like two days. So that would be extremely difficult to do. Um, uh, the folks at mm-hmm. Kinko's would know, basically. And also, when the when the exercise is over, it's true, they take the rubber band and they rubber band it so they can't flip to another page and realize that all the, all the, uh, the, the pages are the same. Where do they turn the book in? Do they turn it into the the people conducting the experiment? And it's then and did, ex- did Max and did Max go through each page of that, of that map and mark it with a red pen? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think Bert was an accomplice in this trick, not the murder, but the trick. Okay, had to. Uh, uh possibly yes, because yeah, Max was friends with Bert. Yeah. Another problem I saw was that okay the pen, the markers that they use do not write at all okay mm-hmm. and but the 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 red marks it was like um, the size of a dime a red mark the size of a dime but what if the person making the mark made the mark just like a pinpoint of a mark or a of, check mark yeah or a check mark just saying that's what I would have done I think I would have done a uh, like a, a just short little line yeah. or something. Now, to be fair, though, we are being rather critical of it, and I, I think mm. that maybe if we watch it again, maybe Dyson did give them very explicit instructions to just make a dark circle, or I don't, I don't remember personally. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. I'm but sure, but yeah, once, I'm overly, like you said, overly critical. Once Columbo explained the trick, were you happy with the trick? Did you think it was a cool trick? Yeah, no, I thought it was a cool trick. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Yeah. Oh man, I remember the first time I saw this, I was on the edge of my seat. Wondering what the hell the trick would be, um, I loved it. I thought that was great. I still like it. I think I think it's cool. Um, yeah. And I, I love that Columbo figured it out. Like that is probably well, he had the help of little Tommy, but it's probably one of the smartest things he's ever done. You know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, what happens next? Uh, so he he. Uh... I, I can't, I'm trying to remember why Columbo puts himself in the guillotine. Um, I don't recall either. So, so Columbo says, "Yeah, I haven't told anybody yet," and and he says, "I, I don't know why he sticks himself in the guillotine, but Elliot takes it as an opportunity to do the same thing and behead Columbo." Yeah, this is one of those rare instances where the murderer tries to kill Columbo at the conclusion. At the conclusion, and. Uh, uh, he's he, he's got the safe and the danger labels on the thing, and he puts mm-hmm. the collar on Columbo, but he puts it so it's on the danger side. Releases the blade, and of course it doesn't kill him. And uh, Columbo says, "Well, this is it. This is the proof I needed. You tried to kill me. I don't think that's going to do it." I don't. Well, I, it shows that he knows how the trick works. You know what I mean? Because if you're not a, magi- a, a magician, I almost said musician. If you're not a magician, a magician, you're not going to know how the trick works because oh it's a secret. Oh my gosh! No, you're right. No, 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 no. It's not okay. I always thought that it was that he tried. He, he had tried to murder Columbo, but the real, really, it's that he knew how the trick worked. Mm-hmm. So he must have been there before, right? Right. Right. 
Makes sense to me. Oh. Okay. Huh. Yeah. All right. That works then. That's better than I thought it would be. All right. So you ready to review? Well, we're not going to review until we hear a word from our sponsors. Nothing. No one is more important than the rescue of the Dauphin at this moment. There is one enemy of the Republic in particular who continues to elude us. A man we consider more dangerous than all the others combined. The Scarlet Pimpernel. Oh, do tell us more about the Scarlet Pimpernel, Sir Percy. All Paris is talking about him. Unchecked, his continued success could undermine the revolution itself. Yours, I believe. While this meddlesome Englishman remains at large, he continues to be a menace. Needless to say, the man who brings him to justice will earn the gratitude of the nation. We have to root out the enemies in our midst. We never know where they might strike next. You have no right to pry into my personal affairs. Even when those personal affairs smack of treason. We're about to embark upon the most dangerous mission yet. All right, let's, uh, you know what, I, you know, I, I have to remember to try to, you know, figure out what number you're going to rate this out of. Uh, I don't. <laughs> there are a lot of numbers in this one, too. Uh, I, I have no remember, no uh, memory of numbers in this one. Huh. But go ahead and tell us, tell us what we're rating it on. All right, Sean, what would you rate this one out of three pounds of corned beef? <laughs> mm. All right, I would rate it. I don't love it. I, I actually liked it a little more than um, I thought I would. Um, I remember not liking it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that there are not that many good clues in here. Um, all of that is sort of eclipsed by the magic trick that, you know, Blake and Dyson do at the beginning and... Um, and that uh, Columbo later does, you know, repeats later on. Um, I don't know if I, I don't really, I don't really care for the murderer either. I mean, I'm not saying that I hate him because he's a douche. If he was, then I would enjoy it more, you know, because that's always fun. He mm. just seemed kind of whatever. Uh, uh, I think Peter Capaldi could do it. I just wanted to see Peter Capaldi. I know it's impossible, but... Um, I when you explained the end in a way that I that made sense to me that that hit it I mean I that 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 worked um, what I do worry about though is how what how did Columbo really really know that Blake was going to try to kill him right then he could have put yeah. it the other way around and killed Columbo accidentally um, but you know I for the most part, I really kind of liked it. Um, so I'm going to give it a two and one quarter pounds out of three pounds of corned beef. I mean, okay. it's, it's not really outstanding. It's, you know, there are some little problems and there's a little bit of filler in there to fill to, to fill in the two hour, you know, broadcast time. But yeah. So what about you? I, I, I don't. Yeah, so, I don't have like, huge opinions about this one for some reason. So I'm going to relate this episode to the um, the funeral scene. Nobody likes going to a funeral, just like nobody really enjoys the later Columbo uh, episodes. But it had magic in it, and it made it very entertaining, surprisingly entertaining. And like that, this episode was surprisingly entertaining for a, a late episode. Um, I I thought the story was really engaging. I did not realize it was the first of the new series mm -hmm. because I really like the intro to Columbo where he's sitting in this car, lights his cigar in the dark. Uh, that was really kind of, that was, he had kind of like a film noir feel to it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, I really like that. Um, you know, Columbo coming on the scene, Nick, he's only going to speak to somebody on homicide. Um, I thought there were some great lines in this. 
I enjoyed. Uh, who was the actor who played Elliot? I thought he was great. Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards. Um, I. It had me thinking. How did they pull that trick off? Throughout, um, and I didn't know until till the end. Um, I I I thought it had a lot of it had humor. Uh, the, the scenes with the kid Tommy. Um, what else did I like? I it, it, overall it was very entertaining. Like I said, I, I was expecting something depressing, but it came out surprisingly entertained. Um, the, I the one thing like I did not like that you brought up earlier was about the screwdrivers. How apparently uh, Elliot had changed screwdrivers or put a screwdriver in, in the in the hand of the body uh, uh, of the the corpse. Um, so we didn't see that. I didn't. I, that I didn't. I didn't care for. Um, I I was actually kind of rooting for for Elliot to get away because he was so close. He just had to get onto that plane. That's all he had to do. And Columbo waiting for him. So there's a lot of little funny scenes like that. Columbo is there waiting for him inside the plane. Um, but it was. I I I thought it was very entertaining. Uh, I thought the subject matter was interesting as well. Uh, so. Minus a few little niggles here and there, I, I would say out of three pounds of corned beef, hmm, I'd give it two pounds and three ounces. Oh, of, okay, of all right. Beef. So it was it was enjoyable, but it was surprisingly enjoyable. Um, if I had to rewatch um, New Columbos, uh, this this would be one of the top ones. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, it, you know the thing is, is that like you know. You think of like Columbo murderers, you know, they all have different occupations and, you know, usually their occupation, you know, has something to do with the murder. This is definitely the case, of course, but if you, if somebody told you, all right, Columbo occupation, psychic, and you think, that's stupid, that's, it's going to be just the stupidest, hokiest thing. But no, they pulled it off. They pulled it off quite well, quite well. Um, so yeah, all right. I seem. I think we're on the same page. You sound like you enjoyed it more than I did, but you gave it a uh, a, a slightly lower review than me. So that's hmm. okay. Whatever. That's fine. You you rated it one ounce less than I did. <laughs> so. Well, let me ask you this question. Do you do you believe in that somebody could read your mind or a remote view? Like they were showing in this. Do you believe it's real or is it all stage magic? I do not believe that anybody could read anybody's mind. Um, I believe that... Uh, man, that's a really difficult question. I don't think that it's going to be like, um, you know, Danny Torrance in The Shining, you know. I think, <laughs> rah, rah. Yeah, I, I don't think it's like that, but I think maybe... You know, I, I know personally people who have said or done things that indicate you know, my mother uh, is a true story. My mom, my mother was in gym class and mm -hmm. she was uh, in the locker room changing at the, you know, after gym. And she turned to her friend and she said, my grandmother just died. And her huh. friend said, oh, she, oh, sorry to hear that. You mean like she died? No, she just died right now. I feel it. She, wow. she went home and... You hear stories like that, and I, those are really fascinating yeah, to me. Yeah, she, she went home, she found out that her grandmother died at about that same time that she was in gym class. Uh, she had a dream that uh, she was in... Um, she went to her uncle's funeral, and mm -hmm. he was uh, wearing a... Uh, he was wearing one of her father's ties. And then later on, her uncle died, and he uh, didn't have any ties, so they uh, gave huh. him one of her father's ties... And she freaked out at the funeral, and they had to they had to drag her out. So, yeah, wow. And she's she's called me. I remember one one time a few years ago, she called me. She says, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, why?" She goes, "Well, I had a bad dream last night about you." So, um, oh, well, anything yeah. bad happened to you? Well, she probably had a. She didn't go into detail, but it was a, probably a dream where I died. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, you know. <laughs> I don't think that you could read someone's mind and like, you know, like Steve, think of a number and I can, you know, tell you what number is. But I think there's yeah. probably closer to things like Deanna Troy in Star Trek, the next generation, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, they call that something. It's, I'm so happy to bring up Doctor Who again. Go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, an empath, empath, somebody knows. Empathetic? That. Empathetic, Empathy? something like that. Empathy or, 
Uh, empath. She's an empath. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. She's an empath, which means that she can feel feelings, um, but not necessarily read the mind. I do believe that there is such a thing as that. Y yeah. I, 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 I kind of side with you on that. I, I think there is something, but I don't think it's measurable. And so if you're trying to use science to to equate it as being real or not, I don't think that's possible because I think it's it's it's, it's as fleeting as an emotion. Yeah, um, yeah. I I think it's it's not something that it can be performed uh, routinely and on on at uh, on precision. Like do this, do it now, give me the results. I don't I don't think that's how it works. I think it's more of intuition. Um, and maybe there is some kind of connection, but I think it's again it's more like emotion. It's it's yeah. fleeting. It's um, you know, and I, but I also believe there's a lot of fakes and a lot of people who, who capitalize on people who are suffering. Like what's that lady uh, from the Montel show, uh, Sylvia Brown? Like that, that one was pure evil. I or um, uh, John Edwards. It was John Edwards too. I, I remember he had a show, but I think people who, who proclaim that they have a power and they could perform it and do it. I think those are those are charlatans. I don't. Yeah. I don't think that's I don't think that's a talent. Maybe someone is better at it than others, um, but I, I just don't think you, you can measure it by by scientific standards. So therefore, yeah. if you don't if you can't prove it that way, then it's you know I'm, I don't think you're gonna believe it. I so. am reminded of uh, not to bring up Doctor Who again, but I am rem oh, reminded gosh. of the time that we went to that little uh, panel at Doctor Who by the guy who could mm. read auras. And you went. Our... And ladies and gentlemen, that was at LAX. Yeah. Uh, by the way, so <laughs> we have been to LA. Uh, that's the joke. If no one, if no one knows us that well, we we actually visit LA quite often, but uh, on business and pleasure. But uh, go on. I'm yeah. Sorry. And you, I, I, I think when we joke about that, people really think, oh, these these backwooded knuckleheads never been to LA, but just whatever. Go well, on. you and our and our mutual friends left, and I I stayed and watched him. And uh, he, he came, did I leave? I think you did, but I'm not no. Sure. I stayed with you. I stayed. With I you. I don't know if it was that time, but I he was there again the next year, and I think it was the next year I went again. Mm. And he was that reading. That was fake. He 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 came up to me during the whole thing. He says, "For instance, I'm going to read your aura. You are a teacher. I can tell by your aura." And I said, "Well, you know, not really. I'm a lawyer." And uh, he goes, well, that's kind of like a teacher. He said, also, I think that you should finish that project you've been working on. And I was actually working on a project at the time. But you could say that to... Everybody's working exactly, on a project. Exactly, exactly. Um, a really great, and this is is on topic, but, you know, we don't, you know, usually do this post-review. But um, uh, Penn and Teller, Penn and Teller are the magicians who I've seen... In, not in concert, but I've seen their, their, them do their magic show in person in, in Vegas. Oh. I was so happy. I, I couldn't believe it mm -hmm. to see them in person. Um, they used to have a show on Showtime called Bullshit. Penn and Teller's Bullshit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they would talk about shit like that. And they've had James Randi on their show a, a few times. And yeah. Psychics was one of them. And John Edwards. And John Edwards, they did not paint a good picture of him. But, uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I see. I never watched John Edwards, so oh, I don't so know anything about. I I don't know anything about him. I know the name, if, but I don't know anything like what his what his trick was or his no, routine if, was. Okay, so he if, if you have a group of like seventy five people, and you go okay over here, I've got a woman named Ruth. I think maybe Ruth, and then a lady raises her hand and she says, "Well, my uh, my dead mother's name was Rebecca." Okay, it's Rebecca. Yeah, Rebecca, so she's very sad. You know, if you want to see true psychics, watch The Sixth Sense. The scene in the car between the little boy and Tony Collette when he tells him tells her about uh, her her dance rehearsal that her that her mother went to. That's true psychic. The John Edwards stuff is fucking bullshit. I swear to God. Now that being said, if they were to reboot Columbo, and I know that this is probably not going to happen. I would really like one of his murderers to be one of these fucking Peter Capaldi. Yeah, well, no. well, Peter Capaldi. Yeah, uh, but I would want one of his. <laughs> no, he would make a great Columbo murderer. Um, I I think that one of uh, one possible occupation for a murderer would be a uh, a ghost hunter, like somebody who has one of those goddamn shows that I used to, that I used to watch. Yeah, Do you know what I'm talking about, and because I, yeah, I I never could stand those. Yeah, I, I don't. 
I fucking love haunted shit, and you know, I would love to go to a haunted place. Uh, not alone though, but uh, a lot of those shows are just you can just tell if you've got fucking a, a brain in your head, it's bullshit. But you know yeah. what? The the whole but a lot of people. But if you want to, but if you desperately want to believe so badly, you'll make it. You'll make your mind. Yeah. Believe it. Yeah, that's why we have the president. We have. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my I'm god. I'm sorry. Are you trying to kill off the remaining? listeners that we have all the people that are listening to this are smart they would okay so there's one other thing I, I did forget to mention during this whole thing is that uh-huh, this that? is the only 90s episode where Columbo uses his glasses I guess they had him drop <laughs> the glasses after this because he puts on reading glasses a lot and the reading gla- his glasses are filthy did you notice that no but they're ugly I don't I don't like those big you know, <laughs> 80s looking glass even though it's in the 90s this is technically on the this side. Is, this is an 80, 89, but uh, isn't there, there isn't there one where he's got it taped up on the side? Because <laughs> I like, think so. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay. So we've got one piece of feedback. Uh, where's my phone? Here it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, my face looks like a butthole, but people. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So you're gonna like this. What? I'm doing the Djibouti dubs, lady. Oh, oh, some people tell me my face looks like a butthole, but I just can't. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is an email from Scott, and it starts off with Columbo Podcast slash Mrs. Columbo is a lie. Thank you, Scott. God, it's like fighting an uphill battle doing this podcast. No one is on my side except for Scott, Steve, which I really Steve, appreciate. Steve, you're like yeah, one of these flat earth people or one of these people that deny the <laughs> You're relating problem. me to a flat earther? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so he says, uh, hey Steve and Sean, uh, love the podcast. Quick note, I've been watching the 70s episodes and I've noticed that Columbo doesn't wear a wedding ring. Yep. There hasn't been a single episode with one. Maybe it shows up in the 90s, but I think he makes up all his family members, including the missus. Yeah, he doesn't wear one in this episode either that we talked about. And that's actually a really good point, I think. That's very good. I've brought that point up. I don't know if you've cut it out. No, I didn't cut Wait, it out. You, I wouldn't cut that out. I sometimes wonder if you edit so I sound like an idiot. No, I don't <laughs> edit to okay. make you sound like it. The only things that I edit out of the podcast... So I don't need to edit because you already sound like an idiot. <laughs> no, no, go on. The only things that I edit out of the podcast is when we have these breaks where we're like looking stuff up on the internet or we get up and pee. Uh, oh, or if, Or if you say, oh, wait, that sounded stupid. Edit that out. I, I will edit it out. So, mm. Used to listen to the TARDIS Tavern all the time as well. Oh, wow. Great show. I never caught why you stopped it, but sure, it has to do with... I'm sure it has to do with Doctor Who loony fans. All the best, Scott. Well, that's... Eh. We stopped doing the TARDIS Tavern because we got tired of watching Doctor Who. Well, it was also during one of the year-long hiatuses, and we just stopped. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we stopped. But I think I, I, there's a, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, there, there there's actually the, you can edit this out if you want, Sean. No, there, no. There was there was a, there was a lot of a lot of venom in uh, in the there. I still think there's currently going on a lot of venom between the Doctor Who podcasters. Yeah. yeah. There, there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, what do they call it? A double uh, when people smile on one side, but you know they're, they're backstabbing on the other. Yeah. I mean, there there's so much. There's there's there are some really nice guys. Uh, that do it, but there's so few, and uh, it, there's, I would say the majority of Doctor Who podcasters um, are not the nicest uh, when you when you get to know them. Yeah, um, it's unfortunate, but there are some good ones. Unfortunately, the the majority of the good ones have left um, doing the podcast. So you can take a guess who we're talking about. But, yeah, uh, well, we we won't go as far as that, but uh, yeah, it was very political. It was very, yeah. And there's a, there's more to it than that, but we really can't talk about it. So, um. but uh, yeah, uh, it's funny. It's uh, before every time we record uh, the kind of the pre-show. Sean and I used to kind of warm up talking to each other. We we talk about Doctor. I think most of the time. Yeah, um, we, we did. We still talk about. Yeah, it. we did today before we started mm-hmm. doing this. Mm-hmm. So, hmm. okay, uh, that's all the feedback we have, uh, Steve. Did you know that we have Sean? we have 23 episodes left? Wow. And only one of them is a 90s episode. 
Well, you keep putting that putting that out there. Are you, are you looking really forward to this, aren't you? Oh, I can't wait to talk about that last '90s episode. And I want to uh, take this out, but I want to after we discuss it, the final '90s one. Uh, I want to just do an all-encompassing what we think of the '90s. Oh, that's a good one. Or like top five '90s episodes or something. Or like something that. like yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Just the, the encompass it, you know. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready to spin it. And go. All right, we are going to watch... Sean, what'd you do to the wheel this time? Uh, I... Damn it. Don't know why it did this, but the last time you did this, it... Oh, my God. Oh, no. (laughs) We're going to be watching Murder is a Parlor Game, a Mrs. Columbo episode starring Donald Pleasance. No, why? Why are you doing this? (laughs) Come on. It's okay, Steve. It's a bonus episode. You get to spin the wheel again on that episode. Come on. We're going to watch it. We're going to enjoy it. We're going to enjoy it way more than the puppet one. I promise. What was the name of it again? Murder is a Parlor Game. Okay. Write that down. (laughs) Oh, you write these down now, so you don't have to... I have to. I forget. You don't have to text me and say, what are we watching again? I haven't done that in a year. (laughs) I used to do it to you all the time, but you'll never forgive me for that. (laughs) All right, so uh, uh, next episode, um, we're going to give you a bonus. I don't number these episodes, but uh, that's one of the three uh, uh, Mrs. Colombo episodes we have. Available to us. That's going to be Murder is a Parlor Game. And it's Donald Pleasance, Steve. It's, Don, it's Donald Pleasance. You like Donald Pleasance? What has he been in? Uh, Columbo. <laughs> God. Uh, Halloween. The Great Escape. Bunch of other shit that I can't know because I'm too young to remember. Uh, is he is he at all like the... Uh... Oh, that, yeah, he was in the... Um... The wine one, uh, any old port. Yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah. Remember doing that one? Like the most, one of the most famous Columbo episodes of all time. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm looking at fo- I'm looking at photos online, and here's one of him dressed up as a Nazi. Nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll be dressed up as a Nazi to celebrate that. Uh, that. Oh, no, God. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I didn't. No, I'm not going to dress up. Like a Nazi, even though I think that Nazis, their uniforms are very fashionable. Interesting. And say goodnight, Steve. Oh God, I can't believe. Steve, there say... goes the rest of the, there goes the rest of the listening audience. Steve, Wonderful. say goodnight. Stay, stay, say goodnight, Steve. Say goodnight. Good night, everybody. You're just supposed to say good night. Thank you for listening to the Colombo Confab podcast. To email us with a comment or question, write to colomboconfab at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at Colombo Confab and look for us on Facebook. If you're enjoying the show, please leave us some happy reviews on iTunes. I love Colombo. Hello, I'm Sean, and I'm the host of the Thousand and One Movies podcast, based on the book A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die. Each episode, I randomly pick a film from the book and spend about 10 minutes talking about its director, the cast, the genre, and my personal thoughts on the merits of the film. Each delicious yet bite sized episode contains information about a film from practically any genre, any country, or any year. Check us out on iTunes, and we'll send you free cookies. Some restrictions apply. I went pay. I just went pay. Oh. I just went pay. I went pay. Ah. Don't you like it when you go pay and it feels so good? Because you're holding it in the whole time. 
I like rabbits because... All right, I like rabbits because you can hold their ears back and they look Chinese. <laughs> it's from Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs>